Good morning, girls. It's Friday. And the exciting part about today is I don't have to work tonight. So no overtime for me. Yay! That is worth a happy dance. For the last two weeks in a row, I've worked overtime. And not that I'm complaining about the hours. It's just the night shift. I'm doing a little bit better. Only two weeks left. And then I'm on afternoons, which is four 10-hour shifts, and yeah, that'll be fun. But at least I'll get to go to bed at about 3 a.m. instead of 7 or 8 or sometimes 9 a.m. It's a little bit better. Just a little bit. Chelsea, I face-stalked your photos from the wedding. They are absolutely gorgeous. Your hair was beautiful. I really do love weddings. I really do want to read the uh, Traveling Pants books. I just have to get a hold of them at some point. Oh, totally off topic. I have my hands on the Lord of the Rings movies. I will watch them. I have them. The book you're reading has an absolutely gorgeous cover. I think it's a beautiful book. I hope it's a good book too. And I agree with you that if I had to wait between any of the Hunger Games books, I would have gone crazy. I bought them all at once and read them all within like a week. They were fantastic. So yeah, I wouldn't be able to wait. And yes, the uh, True Blood series is quite a long series, 11 books, but it's a good one. I haven't read the last two because I'm still waiting for mine to come in the mail. Yeah, I had to buy them because I want to reread them. I find if I reread a book, I pick up on a lot of things that I missed the first time. So that's exciting. It's a really good story. So I like those books. This week, I decided to go in a completely different direction. I read a book by Paulo Coelho. I think that's how you say his name. It's Veronica Decides to Die. This book really makes you think. It's actually based on a true story because the author Paulo has actually been in a few mental institutions himself. I'm not sure why I didn't read that part of the, I guess, description at the back of the book. But um, in this story, Veronica is about 24, 25, so my age. She's a perfectly normal girl, really pretty, has a job, lives on her own. And she's just so upset and bored with the same life day to day. She's from Slovenia. She decided she was going to get sleeping pills and try to kill herself. And while she was waiting for the sleeping pills to take effect, she read a magazine article written by Paulo Coelho. And she decided to write a letter to the magazine for some reason, just saying that she killed herself so that they could put Slovenia on the map. Because nobody knows where it is. It's part of the former Yugoslavia. It's its own country now, Croatia and all that. Geographical stuff. Whatever. But that's how it all started. And then she ends up in Villette, which is the uh, town's mental institution. And it's really, it's about redemption. It's about how she totally changes her views on life around. And the doctor, Dr. Igor, is running a test on a, a sickness, which he calls vitriol, which is actually the name of a poison they used to use in the Middle Ages, like a long time ago. It's very bitter. So he named this disease vitriol because it's about becoming bitter in life and just not living life. And he's doing studies with his patients. And what he did with Veronica was very interesting. Like she came in, her heart was damaged and she had a lot of damage from taking those sleeping pills. But after her week in intensive care, she was better. But throughout the time there, Dr. Igor was giving her some shots to cause, actually bring on heart attack. I believe it's fentol that he gave her, and that causes heart attacks. So that made her believe that she was going to die fatal. So she stopped actually caring. And it wasn't she stopped caring about life itself. She stopped caring what others thought. So it was okay to be insane. As a child, she wanted to play the piano. 
her mother told her, no, don't be a pianist. I'll allow you to take the lessons to develop your life. But she never got to actually do it for a career. But um, in the mental institution, there's a piano. And she said, you know what? Forget it. I'm going to play it. So in the middle of the night, she gets up and she plays it. There's a schizophrenic named Edward that absolutely loves the piano playing. And he doesn't talk to anybody except one patient, uh, Mira or Mara or something like that. And she's the only one that he speaks to. Nobody knows he can talk because he goes out to the garden when nobody's there to talk to her. But he kind of falls in love with Veronica. And just this whole change in the view of life, they get to redeem themselves, I guess. Like, Edward really wanted to be a painter, but because his parents were diplomats, or his dad was, his dad really wanted him to follow in his footsteps. And there's a whole long story in there about Edward. And it's interesting, but I'll let you guys read that if you ever decide to read this book. It's just such a good book because it makes you think about your life. It makes you look at the things and look at like how much we are holding back and we just kind of fit into these categories because that's what we're supposed to do day to day. This makes you think that, hey, it's okay to be a little bit crazy, be outside the box. And I could go on for quite a while about this book, but I really suggest if you are kind of at a point in your life where you don't feel any purpose, you just kind of feel like crap, this is a really good book to read because it is based on a true story. So it's kind of amazing the way Veronica turns her life around. So if you ever read it, I hope you enjoy it. Anyway, I've babbled quite a bit. Stella, I miss your face. Where are you, Stella? It's heartbreaking that we can't all make a video in one week. These tears. I'm going to cry. Anyway, girls have a fabulous weekend. Chelsea, I'll see you on Monday.